What's up guys? My name is Michael and as you saw in my latest video, I'm back from my USA road trip. If you haven't seen that video, click right here or is it here? I don't know. I will link it. You should definitely watch it. This video is going to be about travel photography and the settings that I use on my Fuji cameras when I'm traveling. I'm filming this right now on my Fuji X-H1 with the 16 1.4. And this here is my Fuji X-T2, which by the way has my name in its serial number. Check this out. Isn't that cool? Okay, let's go into travel settings. The thing about travel photography is that you will encounter a lot of different subjects in a very short amount of time. And it can be really challenging to set up the camera manually for changing situations. So if you take photos inside a church, for example, and you get outside where the sun is shining, you would need to adjust a lot of things. I found out that the best way for me to deal with that is to put a lot of things on auto. So for example, the way that will look on my X-T2 is just like that. So as you can see, I put the ISO on auto, I put the shutter speed on auto, and the exposure compensation for this demonstration here is on zero, which of course needs to be adjusted according to the situation and the brightness and the light. What I do is I decide on the aperture to get the depth of field that I want to have for that specific image. Just because I don't want any blurry images or camera shake, I will need a certain shutter speed. And to get that shutter speed, I could do the ISO manually and watch for the shutter speed to get in the range where I need it to be. Or I could tell the camera to do that for me. So what I'm doing is I like to use auto ISO. And a very important setting for the auto ISO in order to work properly is to give it the full range of ISO that your camera is able to handle. Why would you want to do that? I think a lot of people might be afraid from a high ISO camera noise. Now imagine you're in a situation where you took a picture with ISO 1600 and your shutter speed is one quarter of a second. Now you get an image that's really blurry, but you don't get too much noise. So what would you have done in this situation when your aperture is at its maximum, right? There is nothing you can do. So what good is it if your image has low noise, if it's blurry? So what I like to do is I'll give the camera the full range of ISO settings to choose, but I want to have a certain shutter speed, which depends on the lens that I'm using or the kind of image that I try to achieve. Once I want a certain shutter speed, because I might be on a tripod or I might want to introduce some motion in my image. I'm gonna set the time on the time wheel and the camera will adjust the ISO in a way that this is gonna be realized and it's working without a problem. You can set up three different auto ISO settings in your camera and I like to use them for different kind of situations. I have one auto ISO that um, accounts for shutter speed that's at least 1 250th of a second. I have another one that will uh, take care that the shutter speed is not longer than 1 25th. And the third setting will be for shutter speeds not longer than 1 60th. Yeah, and I try to change between these three auto ISO settings depending on the situation that I'm in. But honestly, as soon as I get into, let's call it real photography, where I put the camera on a tripod, or I'm really concerned about image quality, then I might set everything manually. 
But most of the time, that's not necessary and I like to keep ISO on auto, shutter speed on auto, and the aperture manual on the lens. But the most important thing in your camera, besides your exposure, is that you select the focus point and put it on your subject. And the way to do that is this little joystick on, your, on the back of your camera. And once you press that, you can also adjust the focus point size. This size needs to vary depending on your subject. So if you have a pretty small subject that maybe a leaf that's in between two other leaves and you need to get that focus right here, then you would need to use a small focus point. If you shoot landscape, you can use a big focus point or even um, tell the camera just to focus somewhere in the scene because it doesn't actually matter. But the smaller the focus point, the more difficult it will be for the camera to focus. So if you're not in a really shallow depth of field, I would recommend to keep the focus point not too small. So these are the settings that I use for travel photography. What I'm most concerned about photography while I'm on a journey is the depth of field that I'm going to get, the angle of view that I'm going to get, so that makes for the decision of the lens that I put on the camera. And I'm concerned about camera shake. So I don't want any image to be blurry because the exposure has been too long. So that's something the camera can do pretty well. And it won't go on an unnecessarily high ISO unless you choose an aperture that will require a higher ISO. This video is not going to be about the lenses that I bring to my journeys, but um, a quick note about lenses anyway. If you're concerned about lenses and you want to keep your weight down, you should consider just taking the 18 to 55 or the 16 to 55, depending on what you have. But I would say a zoom lens is pretty fine for travel photography. And you, you stay flexible and you don't have to change your lenses that often. For me anyway, I don't like to use the, the, the zoom lenses uh, no matter where I am. I like to stay with my prime lenses so I'm on a really open aperture wherever I am. And I like working with prime lenses because I can think in the angle of view that I would need for a certain kind of shot. And uh, when, I, when I'm zooming, it confuses me. The last setting that I want to talk about is the white balance. And I think it won't surprise you that I put the white balance on auto. Almost every camera manufacturer does a really, really good job on automatic white balance. And if I'm looking for a special look, then I might tweak the white balance. And I really like to use it as a creative tool. But for most of the shots, I like to have a pretty clean and neutral white balance. And that's why I put it on auto. And once you shoot raw, you can work and be creative with the white balance later on in your process. Yeah, these are the main settings. I think it doesn't make sense to go through the menu and talk about all the camera settings because photography happens outside of your menu. And especially with the Fuji cameras where you have your settings really nice laid out and you can really see what you're doing. Um, yeah, take care that you get a good exposure. Take care that you get the best possible angle of view. And don't forget to experience where you are. That makes me think about my travel video, my road trip video once more. <laughs> Just a Quick reminder, don't forget to watch that video. I promise you it's worth it. Drop me a comment about your photography settings when you're on a journey, when you travel. How are you uh, working with your settings? Guys, I hope this video helped you. Leave a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Goodbye.